Alrighty, real quick today, we're gonna have a case running warm and I'm gonna make a playlist of this and just keep going on these. Hopefully give newer technicians a kind of a methodology on how to diagnose an issue. So let's go. First up, the first method to your service call should be read the call. So in this call description, it said that this problem came in 10 days ago. Now, obviously managers aren't exactly the most trustworthy HVAC techs, but um, it's probably worth considering that they're not complete idiots and they probably know that it did come in, you know, 10 days ago or whatever. So uh, there might be a work order or someone that might know something. So first off, you gotta get the manager to show you the case. So you can just take a quick look and we're gonna always check airflow first. First is always airflow. You just kinda see, are all the fans working? Um, so everything actually seems fine with this case. So it actually seems like they put down case running warm to get us here on a, on a weekend for a silly issue. So, but you can hear that that fan, one of the fans is grinding. So uh, we're gonna take a look at the controller. It's actually this case next to the case that we originally worked on. Um, so it's actually not a repeat work order. But we're just gonna check the airflow everywhere. And the airflow is fine. So let's go to the rack and check out the rack. So now real quick, we're gonna look for where it is. Right here, you can see it's 627 on the refrigeration map. Now we're at a controller. You see B27 right there, negative six, negative five set point negative 10 those are good to go those are well within the alarm range so everything is fine here so they kind of probably lied or shot the gun on whether or not this case is running warm but the fans noisy so let's have a look anyway so now we're at the case I actually probed the product about at where it is and we're just going to look you can see this little bit of ice behind that and you can see the tenders right in here probably plug them in We'll take a look. I had them pull the product and then move everything. I'm going to go to town and see what's going on. Yeah, you can see everything's pulled. This case is absolutely filthy. Um, I'm guessing that was the issue, but we're going to take a look at it. Now, we're going to de-ice it. So, let's show you what it is. almost always, well, a lot of the time, there's these hookups on top of the cases. Sometimes they're under the cases, you know, depending on the store. Or sometimes you gotta run something from bakery or something like that, but we're gonna hook up to there, de-ice the whole thing, and clean it all up. Before we get started, we wanna put this case in defrost because if we try defrosting, if we try defrosting that with water, um, all it's going to do is freeze up again and cause us a normal, um, more of an issue. So defrost operation manual on. Also, we need to check the defrost function to make sure the drain pan isn't bad. You can't just assume it's the product in the case. It's a safe assumption with a case like this, but you always have to verify. Don't just assume, verify. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to your seafood, your bakery, wherever you can find a hose, grab this hose and uh, bring it over. So yep, real quick, it's in defrost mode. So uh, we're gonna just de-ice it real quick and we're gonna check everything. Just tip, caution tape that you know, caution tape both sides. People will risk their lives for pizza or ice cream. Just whatever you're doing, they wanna come over and possibly put themselves in danger. So, there's that. Real quick, um, always find your drain. The first thing you ice, it should be where your drain is. If there's a little hole like that in the evap, that's probably where your drain is, and then this thing is also a telltale sign. Find where it is, shove this sucker right in there, de-ice it, and try to unclog it because you'll get water everywhere if you don't. All right, so I cleaned this puppy up. See, pretty gross. Uh, I poured some liquid plumber and some Drano down there. We're gonna give it some time. Um, start already starting to drain better, but now we're gonna troubleshoot that drain pan and just make sure that that's not part of the issue too. So before we can troubleshoot the drain pan, we gotta make sure the defrost is on. It since went out of defrost. So I turned it back on because it's not in defrost, the drain pan won't be working. Well, it might work if the drain, if the if the line is above that uh, this, this point in which the clicks on will change over from the fans to the drain pan. Um, but to make sure that that's the case, we gotta you know turn on defrost to know that the lines are warm enough. I think typically it's around 45 degrees. Okay, so real quick, we're gonna look, see where this is plugged into, right there. So we're gonna take our voltage 
if this plug, don't plug that sucker, take our voltage right there. So how do we know what voltage we want? Most things that's on the nameplate are in the specs. You can see evaporator fan and pan heater, 115 volts. So we're gonna take a voltage right at that plug. 119, so it's supplying voltage. Now we're gonna take our continuity of our heater. See 100 ohms right now, which makes sense, terminal to terminal, for um, your, our resistance because this is a resistance heater. So that makes sense. So just very gently separate that with like a razor knife. Make sure there's no exposed wire. And if you feel uncomfortable, tape it back together. We're going to take our amp draw. Our amp draw is 1.2, 1.3. So now we're at our Kaiser Warren manual for the case model that I had. I just looked it up online. We're going to go down to electrical data. And we're going to look for this 12 foot length right over here. Because our case is 12 feet long. I'm going to go over the drain pan heater hot gas. Because this is a hot gas. And it's... 1.9 is the proper amp draws. Now this is a little high for amp draws, but if we see that it's still working, then it should be just fine because that's that's well within reason. So now what you can do is you can take your temperature gun, kind of look at it, see where it's temping at. So 88 degrees versus 52. So it is working. If you're brave, you can touch it. Okay. Now I did this all the way down and made sure that. You know, there's no breaks in it, no, you know, breaks in continuity or places where it just doesn't really work. Um, it can feel that it's warm all the way down. Um, so we can safely say it's not the drain pan here. The drain pan heater works. So the only thing about it is maybe we'll just move it, position it over the hole, try to maybe keep it there. Maybe that could have been part of the issue. But definitely the food seems to be the main issue. Um, also while you're here, just check, make sure there's no ice up there. Because even though it was only iced up down here, if the fans stop, it can cause icing of the coil. So just make sure there's no icing before you um, put it back together. Now real quick, what you're just going to do? It's just going to make sure the hot gas defrost works, or if it's electric, electric defrost. So you see, that's about right. It should be closer to 80, but it might be at the end. Oh, there we go. See, this isn't bad. Not the best working. Nah, it's not bad at all. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay. We're just checking it, making sure it's working. Okay. So yep, 75. That's, that's plenty. Should be close to 80. But that's plenty. So I know the hot gas is working just fine. Um, even after, you want to make sure after the check valve that it's, so you know somewhat warm 60s not bad um so yeah it's working okay the hot gas is working all right so the drain pan's okay the hot gas is okay so we can definitely say without a shadow of a doubt that it was just clogged now also just real quick get these off the store shelf and just tell the manager okay that's it also leave the wet floor signs up after you leave you don't want to become liable for something but that's it throw it back together wait for it to pull temp and you're good to go